Hello family, friends, and fellow sojourners. And in my last blog, I talked about that God was able to restore what the locust has eaten. That's in the scriptures. And he certainly did in this situation. I had shared with you about how Ryan, uh, when he'd come back to us, was so angry and just filled with rage. And he was taking a baseball bat and hitting my prized flowers, my iris that were in full bloom. They were just magnificent. They brought me so much joy. But he was hitting them with that baseball bat and was hitting every single blossom um, and obliterating the whole flower garden. But if it hadn't been for Ryan in the first place, I would not have had access to these flowers. Um, my friend Rhonda that I've spoken about several times had called me. She said that someone in her church down in Canyon City had passed away an older woman and that her family was going to bulldoze her home and her flower garden. And she told me that, that she had collected these um, hybrid flowers. They were just beautiful and asked if I was interested in, in uh, saving some of them. So she and I went and we dug up two, two flowers each of each color and I think there were about 12 to 15 colors and you know back in the day they, those were expensive flowers so I was so excited so um, the summer that Ryan came back in 1991 um, they were in full bloom well they were gone so I asked my husband I said you know I want you to go ahead and dig up all of these flowers put them in a separate trash can. Um, we'll dig up all the old ones that I had that were, you know, uh, ones that had been around for 30, 40 years, just your average everyday old fashioned iris. And I said, and put those in another trash can so that um, I don't have to be reminded of what Ryan has done. We'll just dig them up and I'll, we'll replant them. Hopefully he'll get out, of, get out from under his anger issues next year. So he put them under our house in the meantime we had a garage sale because at this time we were we had hired a lawyer to fight to keep Ryan so we could adopt him and because we were trying to raise money um, I had to put a little sign out that I was selling iris and I decided to sell most of my um, older iris and this woman said she was very interested and asked how many I had I said well, I don't even have a clue I've not counted them um, I said how many do you want so she was hemming and hawing, and about that time, my husband walked by and I said, hey, will you go get those uh, that trash can full of irises because I've got somebody that's interested in them. So she, he did, and she said, well, what would you take for the whole lot, um, including the trash can? And I said, well, I said, there's quite a few in there, and out of the blue, I just said $15 for everything, including the, the can. So she bought them, and she left. Um, and about four or five months later, I was sound asleep and I rose up out of that bed, sat up just like I did when I said a basket full of broken eggs. And I realized that I had sold my prized iris to this, this woman. I literally said, we sold the wrong can. And sure enough, the next year when I got to looking at the ones that were left over, I could tell the difference in the rhizomes, they were gone. That woman had got every single iris that I had that I treasured. And I thought then I will never be able to duplicate this. I'll never be able to afford these. Um, and was devastated. In fact, I was devastated for nearly three decades. Um, I just thought there's no way that we're in the world that I'm ever gonna duplicate this. And I, it was just a quiet resolve that I was sick at heart because it, they meant so much to me. Well, last year, um, I belonged to an Iris Society site, um, and someone had mentioned that there was a man in Denver that was selling his whole inventory. He had been in business for years. In fact, he was a hybrid, I mean, he was creating irises, and he had decided to get out from under this big farm that he was running and then just specialize in the ones that he'd created. So he was gonna sell them for a dollar a piece. So my husband and I went up and we thought that there was only gonna be one day that he was, was selling and whatever was left over, he was gonna sell the next day. But we thought that we could dig up one of each of those or many of them and 
That's what we did. We dug them up and we didn't get but a fraction of what he was offering. So the next day, our son and his roommate and my husband and I went and dug more iris. And there were still quite a few that we never even got to because there were other people that were digging. There must have been at least 100 people the second day or the first day and then at least that many the next day. So I just thought, oh, I'm so thankful and so thrilled that I am going to be re able to replace uh, those irises that I'd lost 30 years ago. Would you know that that man the following weekend called me and he said, um, not, you have to remember that I didn't know this man. He didn't know me from a load of soap, but um, boy, that's an old fashioned saying. Um, and he called me and said, whatever is left in that field, you are welcome to, and I want to give them to you for free. He didn't know the story. He didn't know how much these irises meant to me, but the Lord put it on his heart, and somehow I found favor with this man. And so that day, my husband and my son and I went and we dug every single iris that was left over. Well, the Lord gave me a vision about how I was going to create this huge flower bed. And I had a design in mind. Um, and so I drew it out on a piece of paper and my husband went out and he wrote it till um, this huge plot. It was 80 feet wide. It was a circle with different designs, geometric designs on it. And that man went out and he created flower beds for these iris. And in fact, he even made it two feet um, wider. So it was four feet, 84 feet um, in circumference. Um, so he ministered to me and he created this flower bed that this May is going to be spectacular. We live next to a small airport, and I can imagine that when these start blooming, that we're going to have little air, airplanes flying over, and people are going to be in awe at, how, at the beauty of these flowers. So again, the Lord restored what the locust has eaten, not, not just a few or, or replaced what I'd lost, but by a, at least a hundred times more. So I just wanted to share this story with you just to show you that your hearts and desires and dreams are known by the Lord, but his timing is perfect. And he knew that this man, was his name is Bob, was going to get rid of his irises and that I was going to be in the middle of it. I felt like Ruth and Boaz being out in the, in the field uh, in the book of Ruth and how she was going out gleaning behind um, the regular people that were being paid to collect um, the bounty of Boaz's, um, uh, it's not fruit, it was barley, I think it was, and um, just the idea that I was in that field like Ruth, and I was going behind people that knew what they were doing, they knew exactly what these flowers were going to look like, I didn't have a clue. I could not afford 35 or $40 a piece for flowers um, that would have cost me to replace those other ones. But for a dollar a piece uh, for a couple of days and then to get the rest of whatever was left in the field uh, given to me for free was something that only God could have done. So I hope you enjoyed this story. God bless you, my dear friends. Bye-bye.